Welcome to Word Life Church. My name is Pastor Freddie Minifield. You know, I'm so excited that you joined us today. I don't believe it's a coincidence. One thing I know for sure is that the Word of God will make all the difference in your life. And the word you hear today is going to encourage you, it's going to challenge you, and it's going to impact your forever. So whatever you do, get all the distractions away and you tune in and expect to hear from heaven. And after the message, don't go anywhere. I'd love the opportunity to pray with you on any needs that you may have in your house or your household. You know, there is no time, space, or distance in the spirit realm. You can be healed, delivered, saved right where you are. So stay tuned after the message. We'll see you then. Glory, glory, glory. It is a privilege and an honor as always to be here before you, before the men and women of God, before the family, for the, the people who honor and worship our Lord. It is a privilege to be here. Um, real quick, our pastors are not here. Many of you know they are on vacation. A well-deserved vacation. You know, they haven't taken a real vacation in I don't know how long. But it, they, it is deserved. It is, um, we've been receiving pictures from them. And I tell you what, they are having a joyous time on that, where they're at now. So keep on praying for them and uh, pray that they come back. We want him back. We need him back. We, we cannot do it, amen, without them. Thank you, Jesus. So let's go ahead and begin here. I'm going to ask you to open up your Bibles to the uh, book of Luke, chapter 5. Verse 2 to 4. I'm going to be speaking out of the New American Standard Bible, the 1995 version to be more specific. Um, again, it's Luke chapter 5, verse 2 to 4. I'm going to give you some time to go ahead and get there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. How many have had, had a blessed week? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Um, before we continue, those of you men in the house, say amen. 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 So those of you who are men in the house, I'm in personally inviting you to our Wednesday Bible study here at Word Life Church at 5 o'clock on Wednesdays. It is an impactful time where just men get together and share the gospel. Amen. I'm also inviting everyone, men and women, to our prayer every Wednesday at 6.30. I welcome you to come. It is an amazing time. Here in service, we can do what we do, but I, I, I call our, our, our Wednesday prayer the hour of power. I, I personally call that because it never fails that the Lord speaks like never before. It's one thing to get, come together on a Sunday, but when we come strictly for prayer, oh my gosh, all heaven breaks loose. So I, I welcome you to come every Wednesday at 6.30. How many have Luke chapter 5, verse 2 to 4? Say amen. 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 I'm hoping it's all beyond the screen here. Thank you, Jesus. Luke chapter 5, verses 2 to 4. If, if it's not on the screen, um, if you don't have it on your hands, look at your neighbor's Bible. Uh, it says like this. And he saw two boats lying at the edge of the lake. But the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him, put out a little way from the land. And he sat down and began teaching the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water, and let down your nets for a catch. Again, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for the catch. Every head bowed. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you, Lord, for we have come to hear what thus saith the Lord. Lord, it is not about what I think or what I feel, but what about you say? Lord, what is it that you have for your people today? Use me as an instrument of clay to speak the word that you have given me. 
I declare that every ear and heart be open. I bind the enemy and I shut him up in this moment. I bind every distraction, every voice of distortion. Satan, I command you to leave this place. I shut you up in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for the word that will go forth this day. La diso lo moreja, la diro lo montesa, la hizo lo morenca, la montorro, por ese antera. Ora es así, ora, así ora. The day will come when I would say, hear, listen, and go. And that day you will go to where I have called you to be. It will be a place to where I have called you. I have summoned you to go, a place to where there will be victory, there will be signs, and there will be wonders. It will be a place that I have called you to go, a place that you will go to and do the work that I have called you to do. It will be from, from away from this place. It will be a time of glory, a time of praise. Trust me, listen to me, and follow me as I go before you to prepare the place for you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. How many can say amen? Thank you, Lord God. I do believe the Lord has been saying that word prophetically for some time now, and I do believe it is time for word life to get out of this building. I believe with my whole heart that God is calling us to a greater work, and it is outside of this building. It's going to be a powerful move of God like never before. So, Church of Word Life, be ready. Because miracle signs and wonders are coming. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. The passage depicts a moment in the Word where after preaching in Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and demonstrating the authority and power, Jesus went to Peter's house. The Bible says that from sun down to sun up, Jesus was healing various sicknesses and diseases. He was also casting out devils. But it came to a point where Jesus had to leave Peter's house. He left to, ventured off to Judea. And when he arrived at Judea, he arrived at a lake. And while standing at the edge of the lake called Genesaret, he encountered two boats. One belonging to Simon Peter and Andrew, his brother, and the other belonging to James and John, sons of Zebedee. Later on in the scripture, you're going to be known as sons of thunder. Verse 2, Simon, Andrew, James, and John, after a long day and night of fishing, <clears throat> they get out of the boat and start washing their net. <clears throat> Tired. After fishing all night, the Bible says, seeking, sitting out in the water, hoping for a catch of just at least one fish. They gave up and came to shore, got out of the boat and started cleaning their main way, their main tool that brought the main source of income. That was the net. <clears throat> After after sitting there on a boat in the water all night till all morning, not catching one fish, you can just imagine and seeing them out there in the middle of the ocean, in the middle of the lake, waiting and hoping to catch at least one fish to find out that nothing could be caught. This one thing I want to share with you regarding this specific verse. If you notice, they did not drop the net or they did not throw the net. They did not say, you know what, we're done for today. Forget it. They did not throw the net into the boat and walk away. They took the time to wash the net. After they spent all night and day sitting on the boat, tired and probably hungry, they went to shore, got out of the boat and washed the net. Washing the net did not mean they were done for good, but that they were done for right now. The significance of when they started cleaning their net is though, though, though things might have not been working for them at that moment, from the knowledge of fishing, they knew that tomorrow was another day. They did not give in to the situation that they were encountering at the time. 
Just because things might not be working for you right now, doesn't mean things are, are not going to work for you later. Just because things might not be looking good right now, does not mean that it will not work for you later. Washing their net meant that they were going to get back at it again. Washing your net and getting back in the game is what we're supposed to do. Never give in to what you see. Never give in to what you hear. Never give in to what is around you. We have to get off the boat, wash our net, because tomorrow is another day. The day will come that the master will jump in the boat and show you something you have never seen before. Never give in to the situation. You can give up for that moment, but I urge you to never give in. Never give in to not having what you've been praying for and believing that you will never receive it. Because that is the one thing that the enemy does. He lies to you and tells you that you will never get what you've been praying for. You can be praying for weeks, months, years for a miracle, for something awesome. And just because you don't see it at that moment doesn't mean it's never going to happen. Because this is one thing that I know that is true, that we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by what the Lord says and not about what we think or feel or see. It is about what the Word of God says. And the Word of God says that we are blessed and highly favored. So if I am blessed and highly favored, that means that whatever I speak out of my mouth, believing it will come to pass. It will come to pass. It doesn't matter what it is, it will come to pass. Because the Lord said, if you ask in my name, I will do it. Verse 3. Jesus hops on the boat without even asking for permission. If you think about it, James, Andrew, Peter, and John, at this moment, they didn't know Jesus, but they heard of a man who was doing many things. They heard of somebody that was doing things around, but they never knew the person specifically. But though without questioning, without asking, Jesus jumped into Simon's boat and asked him to push him a ways out so that he can continue speaking and preaching to the crowd. At this moment, we can surely be assured that Peter and all the other three were dumbfounded. Put yourself in the position where Peter, James, John, and Andrew were. You just finished fishing all night. You come to shore washing your nets, and all of a sudden you see a crowd of people coming your way. And there's this man standing there, and he says, hey, push me outside. Push me towards outside of the water. Our mindset would be like, this guy is crazy. Who is this guy, first of all, to get into my property, to take my thing, my source of income, and tell me what to do? Verse 4, after when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. After Jesus finished, he turned specifically to Peter and told him, hey, take me out to the water and throw your nets in the water for a catch. For Jesus to tell them to go into the deep tells us that the place where they were fishing all night and all morning was probably a place they normally fished at, was a place where they normally went to and had previous successes. The place where they were fishing might have been where they were able to catch fish at one time, living in the past experiences and the past outcomes. The place where they were probably fishing was a place where they were familiar with. A place that they knew that one time they got fish there. But after toiling and struggling all night, not getting one fish, the Lord says, go out to the deep, which was further than where you were, and throw out your nets. Sometimes we have to go beyond what we're used to in order to receive what God has for us. Sometimes we have to go beyond what we're used to in order to get what we've been waiting for. 
We have to go beyond what is familiar in order to reach the capacity of where God wants us to be. We cannot continue doing, acting, and speaking the same thing when God wants greater and bigger things for our lives. We cannot settle for the mediocre, settle for the same thing over and over again when God wants great things for us. We cannot, just because, yes, in the yester time, you had a fabulous time with God doing one thing, that doesn't mean that same thing is going to work. Because God changes in a lot of ways. He changes a lot of things. Sometimes it takes for you to get on your knees and pray, but sometimes getting on your knees doesn't work. You have to get up and walk around and pray. Things change. The Lord does different things all the time. And that's what the Lord is. He doesn't do things all the time the same. Sometimes we have to do things differently in order to get a better understanding of where he wants us to go. We have to go beyond our capabilities and beyond what we're familiar with in order to know beyond the wall of our limitation and our imagination. We can allow, not allow previous experiences to dictate where we will go. We cannot. And I say this for example, because for me, in previous time, I, in order for me to worship God, I had to have the sound, I had to have music pumping, I had to have the glory falling on church, I had to have that, if I didn't have that, I, I felt like it wasn't a good service. It's when I, when I, when I came, when I came to the knowledge of knowing that if I just worship him, regardless of what was happening, regardless of the band, regardless of what was going, even if it was, I was the only one in the room, going beyond what I thought was right, it was then that I knew the truth of who I was and what he had for me. But going into the deep means that you won't be able to rely on your own ability. If you think about it, when he sent them off to go to the deep waters, it was beyond what they were used to. What they were used to was a pretty, not shallow, but it wasn't as deep as going out to the middle of the sea. So you can just imagine being expert fishermen, they knew where the bottom was at that point. They knew how low they can send their fishing rod. They knew how much they knew to do. They were experienced fishermen. They did this for years. It wasn't something that they just got up one morning and did one time. They were experienced in what they were doing. So they were relying on their own knowledge and understanding of what they knew to do in the work. They weren't relying on what was true. The truth of who Jesus was. They were relying on what their experience was and what they knew to do from previous times and just by knowing of having the expertise of doing this forever. And a lot of times, we do the exact same thing. We come to God in the way that we think God should do things. We come to God thinking that church services are supposed to be this way, this order, and this fashion, and after this, I need to go home. And that's not who God is. God has his own way of thinking. His own way of doing things. The Bible says that his mind is not our, his thoughts are not our thoughts. The way he thinks is not how we think. Different. So we can't rely on our own knowledge of how we think things should be done. Because it won't work. It just won't work. But check this out. But going into the deep also means there is more room for blessings. The deeper you go, the harder it will be, but the more room you will have for blessings. You will have more capacity to receive. If we continue to dwell and fish in the shallow parts, we will only get what, we, what can be caught in the shallow. One thing I want to tell you, the big fish are in the deep parts. The big fish are in the deep parts. If you're looking for big blessing, you have to go to the deep. The deep is necessary. It is necessary for our growth. We need the deep in order to bring out that which is of an abundance. 
that which is beyond our own capabilities. Without the deep, we will never know to trust God and walk by faith. The deep is needed in our lives. We need to walk in the deep. How else can we walk by faith if we don't go beyond what we're used to? How else will we know to trust God if we don't go beyond what we're comfortable with? Com be being comfortable is the most dangerous thing you could ever do in this walk of faith. Being comfortable is so dangerous. Why? Because it is in the comfort, it is in comfort where the enemy can easily attack. We'll get so comfortable <laughs> even comfortable to say, ah, I don't need to go to church. I'll just watch from home. It might not seem like a bad thing, but there's a scripture that says, I don't know it in English, I don't even know it in Spanish. <laughs> the expression of the scripture says that don't, don't stop gathering together as a congregation. I don't even know it in Spanish. I can't, I can't, I'm not good at translating here. Basically, don't stop from crying. If somebody can find that scripture for me. That way you know I'm not making it up. But it's important that we come together as a church body. To come together as a church body and magnify the Lord together. It's one thing, yes, to be in your home, but the body needs the body. Every part needs the part. I cannot function if my toe is not there, I will not be able to walk right if my toe is not there. I will not be able to pick up things without my arms. Every single one of you is needed in this church. We cannot be comfortable and living a life mediocre and saying that is okay. The Bible says that the Lord is looking, looking for worshipers, those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. In spirit means to be outside of your comfort zone. To walk in the spirit means to be outside of what you think is okay. We who were baptized in the spirit, we who were, who were saved, washed by the blood, dunked in the water, raised up as new creatures, we are no longer men, we are now spirit beings. And as spirit beings, we cannot no longer walk by the flesh, think by the flesh, act in the flesh. We have to walk and talk in the spirit. So if we are to walk and talk in the spirit, is giving way to the comfort of the body the way we're supposed to go? Now don't get me wrong. We are to rest. Don't get me wrong there. You are to rest. The Lord wants us to rest. But I've said he rested on the seventh. Don't get me wrong. You are to rest. But when you take comfort over blessing, comfort over anointing, comfort over the, what, the, the, what God wants for us, that is when it is dangerous. Because that is when the enemy comes in and says, yes, you're okay. Lay down. You don't have to go. It's fine. You don't have to read the word. You're too tired don't pray. You'll just fall asleep anyway. Yes, sir. What is it? Can you put it on the screen, please? Hebrews 10, 25. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> it's not about the comfort. What does it say there? Let's read it all together. One, two, three. Read. Not for Amen. So it's not me, it's the word of God. I would drop a mic if I had one. <clears throat> it is important. It is important. Let's continue on. We will never know <clears throat> what God can do in our lives unless we go into the deep. When Jesus said, let down your nets, let down your nets for a catch, he did not, he did not specify, lay down your nets and let's see if you'll get a catch. Or lay down your nets and you might get a catch. He specified, lay down your nets for a catch. That indicated that, you, that they were going to catch something, something 
<clears throat> was going to be caught. He said, for a catch. That means that we are guaranteed something is going to come out of the water. He, they were guaranteed that something was going to snag in the net and come out of the net. <clears throat> Let's read verse 5. And Simon answered and said, Luke chapter 5, verse 5. <clears throat> and Simon answered and said, Master, we worked hard all night and caught nothing. Peter is such an interesting character. He said, Lord, we worked all night and we got nothing. We tried it. We tried to trust. We tried to do it. But nothing came out of it. <laughs> if you can just imagine Peter. Peter was a very interesting, very um, outspoken guy. He did not hold back in a lot of ways. Well, Peter told, well, Jesus told him to cast your net, go to the deep, cast your net into the water to catch. Peter automatically replied, but God, but, but Jesus, we were there all night and didn't catch anything. Just because you said to go doesn't mean we're going to do it. We were there all night. We've tried to do it, but nothing worked. Nothing happened. We use all that we know to do in order to catch the fish, but nothing worked. They tried it, they did it, and nothing happened. This is something that we also tend to say as well. Lord, I try to trust. I try to stand in belief. I try to walk by faith. But no matter what I do, it never works out. No matter what I try, it never works out. Lord, I try to stop drinking. Lord, I try to stop smoking. Lord, I try to read. I try to abstain from the appearances of evil. I've tried to listen to the good word. I try to pray every day. I try to fast. But Lord, every time I try, Lord, I'm not successful. Well, this issue there is you're trying. And it's not about your strength or your abilities. It's not about what I can do. I tell you what, I'm a, I'm a, I am not strong alone. I know for a fact that I will never be able to make this walk on my own if it wasn't for God. Why? Because I have tried to do it on my own. I have tried to follow the religious steps. <clears throat> I've tried to do and follow what other people do. But I came to realization that it's not about what third doing is going to affect my life. It's about what I'm choosing to do to trust Him and to rely on Him and say, Lord, I can't do it, so I rely on you and trust in you. I choose to trust in not my, my own understanding, but in all my ways I acknowledge Him. The Bible says that He will what? direct our path. He will show us where to go and what to do. That is trusting in Him. So it will never work if we try to walk this walk on our own two feet, on our own merits, on our own abilities. It will never work. It's not about us trying to do the hard work. If you're working hard to do it, then you're doing it on your own merit, on your own strength, and on your own ability. If you are struggling to maintain yourself as a believer, it's because you're doing it on your own. And it's not about us. It's about Him. It's about His strength. It's about His abilities. It's about what He can do in us, through us. Matthew chapter 11, verses 23, 28 to 23, 28 to 30 says, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If you are struggling, if you are tired, tired of having, of trying to be successful in this walk, if you are tired of trying to make it, but you can't, the Lord says, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 29 says, take my yoke upon you and do what? And learn from who? You want to know why he says that? Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. In other words, stop trying to get your education from outsources. Stop trying to get your wisdom from other things besides God. Stop relying on preachers of church so-and-so and, and bishop wishy-washy and, and, and who knows and what sits from out there. Stop trying to rely on other people to lift you up and make you successful. We have to stop seeing 
other individuals doing their thing and we have to keep our eyes on the Lord and on the word. Because I know from experience, men will fail you. Men will fail you. I know for a fact, men will fail you. They can be the most profound person. They can have the most impactful ministry. Every person will fail you some way or somehow. Maybe not calling you back or maybe not being there when you needed them. Somebody will fail you. But this is why we cannot put our trust in man. It's good to look at people and see the great things that they have done. It's awesome to, 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 be, to, be, to be happy and joyful for the successes that they have accomplished. But we cannot make them God. We cannot put them on a pedestal where we worship them instead of the, our Lord and Savior. I say this because it happens over and over and over again. The issue, when we, the issue about trusting men is that when they fail, we feel like we'll never do it. Because we look at, oh, this man of God or this woman of God was so great, and they fall from grace, and then we allow the enemy to come to our mind saying, well, if they were so great, and they fall from grace, you think you're going to make it? When you struggle every day with your own weaknesses? We cannot trust in men, but trust in God. Verse 30 says, For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. We are trying to accomplish tasks based on two things. They were trying to accomplish tasks based on two things. Basing it on previous outcomes and two, on their own abilities and knowledge. These fishermen were trying to be successful on what they knew from previous successes, from previous outcomes. They were basing every single thing on that. When we try to do what God has called us to do and what we think we know to do, there is a 50-50 chance that thing will work. Either it will or it won't. But if it does work, it will be harder and take longer when we try to do things without God. Look at the, Egypt, the Israelites. When the Pharaoh let him go, how long did it take for them to get to the promised land? It took them 40 years to get to there. It took them a long time to get to there. If we look at uh, uh, Exodus chapter 13, the, 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 I think verse 7, the Bible says that the, the Lord, God, that God was, there was a different way to go. It was through the way of the Philistines. But he, and that was a shorter way. But the reason why he didn't go that way, because he knew that these people would change their minds allow fear to come into their hearts and they will return back where they came from. So because he knew they were not going to trust him, he had to go a different route. And the route that he took them was a route that he knew they, they would be okay. And it took him 40 years to go to a place that was probably just around the block. But this is what happens when we try to do things, believing and thinking on our own ways versus trusting in the Lord with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our bodies, with all that we are. This is what happens. The thing that you're trying to do could probably work out, could probably happen, but it will not happen in the way that God wants it to happen. So what will happen is you will take longer. You'll be more stressful. You'll be anxious and filled with anxiety. You'll, you'll hurt those around you. You'll start to lash out at people around you because what you're trying to do what you think the Lord is calling you to do may be the thing that he's calling you to do but it may not be the way he's calling you to do it this is why we have to make sure that what we are doing is not only what God wants us to do but also in the way that he wants us to do it amen so God had to take them on a long way around Peter said in verse 5 he finished saying but but at your bidding I will let it down so Jesus told him to go out to the deep cast your nets Peter said but we tried all night we did it all night nothing happened but because you want to do it I'll go ahead and do it and he did it
We have to learn to listen. We have to practice listening to the Spirit of God. It is one thing to say and another thing to do. Listening to the Holy Spirit is vital for us as believers. How many here are filled with the Holy Spirit? If you're not, I want everybody to, to grasp this. The Holy Spirit is not needed for salvation. But the Holy Spirit is like having a cheat codes to life. So why I say this? We go through life doing things, functioning, uh, trying to do things, verse save, right? Washed by the blood and everything. We can be in church, functioning and doing things in our own way. But when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, it's having access to knowledge that we would not have on our own. It's having access, direct connection to our Heavenly Father. It's like having that, 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 that red phone that has direct access to the White House or that, I don't know if it's red or blue, I don't know what color it is, but it's having that one phone with the one button, direct access to the, to the White House. That is what the Holy Spirit is. Why would we want to walk this walk this Christian walk, I don't like to say Christian, this, this believing believer's walk, why would we choose to walk this walk with our own power and ability that is limited? When we have power from on high that surpasses the abilities of what we can do. It is being superheroes on this earth. Another way to look at it is, do you want to be Clark Kent or do you want to be Superman? I give a preaching on that one time. Do you want to be Clark Kent or do you want to be Superman? That's the difference. That's the most simplest way I can put it. Walking and living in the Everybody close your eyes. Pray. Father, we thank you. If you have been filled with the Spirit, why don't you pray in the Spirit right now? Why don't you take the time to listen? Just listen. Here we are, Father.
Déjalo, tiro. Thank you, Jesus. <sighs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We have to take time to listen. It is when we take the time to listen, we will see the hand of God in our lives like never before. We have to take time to listen. If we don't listen, we will never know what God will do. There was a time, I think I said this one time, I remember I was sitting on the couch <clears throat> and I was watching TV and I was, as I was watching, the Lord told me, get up. And I got up and he told me to go close to the TV I got there, and, and the way our TV was set, there was a TV, and then they were still sitting on some TV um, uh, table. I don't know what, remember what it's called. And there were two book stands on the side of the TV. And I got up, and the Lord said, the day will come when I will tell you to move that. I said, okay. He said, just be ready. I said, okay. So a couple of days passed, and I was sitting there watching TV. The Lord said, get up. I got up. He said, get close to the TV. got close, and he said, the day will come when I will tell you to remove this from here. I said, okay. So that happened a couple more times, and the day came. It was a Saturday morning. I remember specifically. I was by myself, <clears throat> and I was praying. The Lord said, now is the time. And I went outside of my room, and I went in front of the TV, and he says, now is the time. Move it. So I said, okay. So I started. I took, I took the TV off, took a, unplugged all the cables, put everything to the side, and then I picked up the TV, put it to the side, and I moved everything from there. And I was thinking uh, I was going to take it to my room. So I took it to the room. I took the TV to the room, and I was like, okay, maybe the Lord doesn't want us to have a TV in the living room, right? Because he wants us to be, you know, to get together as a family, have it a family room. So I took it to my room. This is what's important. This is when it's important to listen to what God says specifically. <clears throat> so in my room, there was a, our bed here facing the wall. There was nothing in front of the wall, and there was our our um, our clothes where clothes goes in our dress our dresser it was our dresser on this side and then uh, i went in my room and like hmm since the lord doesn't want the tv over there i'll just move the dresser here so we can have the tv here so the lord can i move it the lord said sure so i said okay so i i i took all the drawers from the dresser i moved it, and it was it was extremely heavy i was struggling to move it i was pulling out by myself pulling it got it finally got into place put all the, clo the, 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 the drawers back in the dresser, and I put the TV on, and, so and the Lord said, clean the TV. I said, okay, I cleaned the TV, and then I went back in the room. He said, okay, clean it all there. And on the floor, there were surge protectors covered in dust. I will never look behind there, and I will never clean behind there. It was my responsibility when I never did my responsibility. <clears throat> so I cleaned everything there, and I wiped it all, I mopped it, <clears throat> cleaned, cleaned the border, the frame, the everything, the, even the wires. I took all the dust off of it, and it was done. I said, there you go, Lord. I said, okay, put it all back. I was like, what? And I just remember I was sweating, pulling that dresser up by myself. It was, it was tough. I was, I was dressed. I was exhausted, you know, doing all that stuff. He said, put it all back. I said, I stopped like, Lord. Why did you tell me to put the TV over there and move the dresser? He said, I never told you to move the dresser. 
You asked me, I said, sure. But I never told you the TV was going to stay there. He says, put everything back. So I put everything back, put my dresser back, put everything away the way it's supposed to be, the way it was. And the next day, we were sitting down, my wife, my, my daughter and I, we were sitting on the couch watching, and all of a sudden, there was a spark behind the TV. Oh, like, you, just, uh, you heard a zzz, and a huge spark, you just saw it shot up. And I was like, whoa. And I looked back, looked behind there, and the search protector had burned out. And I came to realize that if I would have never cleaned that dust, all that would have caught fire. And the Lord told me, you must listen to me, no matter how ridiculous it may be. So two things are in the story. One, we have to make sure that we listen to God. We are listening to God in every single moment. Because if I would have never been listening, I would have never known about the search protector. And for all, for all we know, that could have caught fire and could have messed up all kinds of things. The second thing, if I, if I don't listen precisely to what the Lord says exactly, I'll end up doing more than what I'm supposed to do. The Lord didn't tell me to move the TV and move the, our, 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 our drawer and dresser and put it all fancy, put it all there so that we can enjoy ourselves watching TV. He just said to move it out of the way and clean that space. It is important. We need to learn to listen to God and to listen to what he says precisely. Live our lives hearing and listen to the voice every single day. The Bible says pray without ceasing, correct? It says pray without ceasing. Always be hearing and speaking to God on a daily basis. Another thing we have to do is give up the right to be right. It's not about what we think is right. It's about what God says is right. A lot of times we get in our own way that we don't allow the work of God or what God wants to do to happen. We have to learn to give up the right to be right. We aren't right at all ever when it comes to what God says. It's not about how much we know or who we know. It's, it's not about or how long we've been doing it. If we would just listen to what his purpose is and how he says to do it, no matter how ridiculous it may be, watch what will happen. If we choose to listen and do what he says, watch what will happen. Verse 6 says, and they had done this, what, what the Lord asked them to do, to put the net in the deep. They have done this. They enclosed a great quantity of fish and their nets began to break. Their nets began to break because they were obedient to do what the Lord said. They received an abundance, an overflow of blessings. There's so much that their nets started to break. Listening and following God's direction will only bring ease and blessing beyond our comprehension. Philippians 4, 7 says, and the peace of God will surpass all comprehension. If we learn to listen to God, no matter what the circumstances is, we will always be at ease. We will always be okay. Because why? Because it's not about us doing the work. He will take care of it. <clears throat> One thing I have learned in my life is to never worry about bills getting paid. Never worry about things getting done. Because when I worry, my wife worries, my family worries, my life gets a panic, and nothing goes right. I chose to learn to trust in God and not in my own understanding. I, cho I chose to learn to lean more on Him than what I know to do. Because if it was up to me, I'd have three jobs and working all night. You'd be seeing me at IHOP working it all uh, throughout the night, flipping the pancakes, doing all this stuff. But it's not about what I can do. It's about what the Lord has for me and for us. Amen? Philippians 4.19 says, And you will supply all our needs according to who? According to what? His riches and His glory. It's not about what you have in your bank account. It's not about what you can do. It's about His riches and His glory. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10 says, Now He who supplies the seed to the sower, which is God, he who supplies seeds to sower and bread for the food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. This is the amazing thing here. Philippians 4.19 says, He will supply all our needs according to His riches and glory. Right? Supply all our needs. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10 says, He will supply bread for food. That's a need. That's proof. He will supply all our needs. Bread for food. That's a need. But not only will he supply the need, but he will also supply the seed to the sower. 
He will also bless you so that you can be a blessing. So that means when we learn to trust him, not only will he take care of uh, your necessities, but he will bless you in abundance so that you alone can be a blessing to others. He will multiply the seed that he gives you in order for you to be a blessing and live in abundance. That is the God we serve. <clears throat> but that is only when we learn to listen and trust in who he is. When we learn to listen and do his ways, our nets will flow. Verse 7 says, and they signaled, Peter and Andrew signaled to, to their other partners, which is James and John, in the boat for them to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats, so they began to sink. They had so much of an abundance because of their obedience. They had so much that they overflowed that they had to call for help to pick up what they could not pick up. And the Bible says that both their boats started sinking because of the abundance that they're receiving because of the obedience. Because they were listening. Listening and obeying brings blessings to others. It's not just about you my brother and my sister, it's not just about me. It's about what comes out of us. It's about what overflows through us when we are obedient to the word of God. When we are obedient to what he says. They, they had such an abundance of fish, they, they alone could not handle it. They had to call James and John to come help them gather the fish. When we make a choice to obey him and do and flow in his purpose, not only will we walk in blessing, but those around us will also reap the reward of obedience. The psalmist says in, in Psalms 23, my cup runneth over and we too will be able to say lord my cup runneth over when we are obedient to the lord we will just walk around saying look i'm so blessed i'm so highly favored i'm so highly favored my cup is overflowing because of the obedience and that's how we need to walk they had so much that both boats start, uh, were started to sink now check out what peter did this was this is the amazing part verse 8 and 9 it says, but when Peter saw that he, he, that he fell at his feet, saying, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Being amazed at the overflow that Jesus caused in their lives, Peter understood that though he had all the knowledge of what it meant to be a fisherman, after doing it for so many years, in this moment, he realized that it wasn't about his knowledge. It wasn't about what he could do. It was about listening to the voice of the Lord. In this moment, relying on our own understanding on how things work or standing on previous victory outcomes in, in fishing wasn't enough. It wasn't enough to know how to do the work. It, was, it, it took knowing the person who called you to the work. And that's one of the things that a lot of Christians have as an issue. We do the work of the Lord so much, but we forget about the Lord of the work. We try so much to do so many things, to do so many things for God, but we forget about including God in the work. That happens so commonly. But Peter was so amazed that he fell at Jesus' feet. He was so amazed. But verse 9 says, he, for amazement, he see, he, he see he, for, for amazement had seized him and all his companions caused such of a catch of fish which he had taken. He was so overwhelmed at what he saw that he fell at Jesus' feet and said, Lord, get away from me. I am a sinner. He said, Lord, get away. I am a sinner. Because he understood that relying on him was what he should have done in the beginning. Instead of saying, oh, but we tried. We tried to do it, but it wasn't successful. But if you want to do it, I'll do it. We have to learn to obey right away. We have to learn to obey right away. The reason why is because if we don't obey right away, the enemy can easily creep in. I remember when we were driving um, then on this plaza back here, uh, we're going to, I think it was Olive Garden, and there was a man standing in a corner, and he was holding a sign, work for food, something like that, and uh, I passed by, and the Lord said, go, 
And I come to John, I'm like, wait a minute, do I go, do I go now? And it, instantly the enemy said, no, don't go. No, you, you're just, you're not hearing it right. You just keep on going. And I heard a still small voice, go. Okay, and I, I pulled to the parking lot. It's like, okay, Lord, should I go or should I not go? And then I, I heard immediately, don't go, don't go. No, it's fine. You're just hearing things. I said, you know what? To my wife, you know what? I got to go. The first voice I heard was go. And the Lord will never do things, will never send me to somebody if it's not because he wants to do something. So I just went right away, got off the car and spoke to this man. This man told me everything that was going on with him. And, and he was having such a hard time. He moved in. He just recently moved in and had back problems. And, and I prayed healing over him. And he was miraculously healed on the spot. And I was also able to sow a seed into him, financial seed. And, 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 and it, was, it was awesome. But we have to learn to obey right away. We cannot allow the enemy to come in and take away what the, what the Lord has already placed in our hearts. Amen? He was amazed. <clears throat> It wasn't about Peter's know-how. It wasn't about his, his, his knowledge. It was about the purpose behind the thing, the action. The Bible says that Peter fell down on his feet, understanding that alone he could, he could not do it. We can imagine Peter crying at Jesus' feet, acknowledging the lack of his ability to do it on his own. Peter said, go away from me, for I am a sinful man. Why? Because he was amazed, stricken at the miracle that was done, even when he tried to provide, to prove to Jesus that he knew what he was doing. He broke down and humbled himself and said, Lord, away from me, for I am a sinful man. Sometimes... It ta- sometimes it takes for us to break in order for us to understand what the Lord has and wants to do in our lives. Sometimes we have to humble ourselves to the most lowest in order for us to understand what the Lord has for us. You might say, it's too much, Terry. That's too much, that's too much drama. That's too much thing to get on your knees and, and cry out. That's too much. But it's not too much because the Lord seeks those of a broken heart. He looks for those who humble themselves unto Him. He looks for those who come to Him with a contrite heart. Did He not tell Tell the disciples, those who come, humble themselves as this child and come unto me. They shall be, they shall what? Inherit the kingdom of heaven. We have to learn to humble ourselves. Tears will still work. Tears and humbleness uh, does not indicate weakness. It indicates brokenness. Until some of us get broken, we will not find the strength of God. We will not see what God can do. We have to humble ourselves unto God, just like Peter did. And I'm going to end with this. Luke chapter 5, verse 11. He said, when they had brought their boats to the land, they left everything and followed him. I'm going to end with this, like this. The, when, when, when Jesus told them what to do, they did what, the, what Jesus told them. They went out to the deep and dropped their nets. When they dropped their nets, their nets were filled with an abundance. And when that happened, Jesus told them, don't fear, follow me. They left everything and they followed him. What am I trying to say with this? In our lives as believing believers, we go through moments in time. We go through moments in our lives when the Lord sets up a place of victory where we have the option to choose to trust him. It is a choice that we have to make. And that choice is to stop trying to do things on our own and follow and trust in him to do the work. Sometimes it will be to go out to where you're not comfortable being. Sometimes it may be to go beyond your capabilities. But one thing I will say, that if you can do it on your own, it may not be God's way. It may not be what God wants you to do. It is when it is beyond our own capabilities, and if it goes with the word, that is what God is calling you to do. It takes a lot of trust to go out to the deep and throw out the nets 
after you already tried for many hours to do. Today I encourage you to don't wait. Make the choice today. Make the choice today to trust in Him and not on your own understanding. The disciples went with Him only hearing about the things that he did. And at the end, because of the choice they made, they became pillars of the gospel. They became examples of who we are to be like. Today, you too can be that example that your family your friends, your nieces, your nephews, your brothers, your sisters, will look to and see what Jesus can do. You may be the only one saved in your family, the only one following God in your family. Today I tell you, choose to trust in Him and follow Him wherever He goes. It might seem hard, but do it. I guarantee you will never regret it. Amen? Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord God, for the seed that was sown today. We thank you, Lord God, for what you have done today, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for every heart touched, every mind put at ease. We thank you, Lord, for the miraculous power of your spirit, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for what you continue to do in each of our lives. Lord, I thank you for the miracles. We thank you for the prophetic word. We thank you for doing, Lord, a great and mighty work. Lord, this day we choose to trust you. We choose to rely on you. We choose to look at you, Lord, as a source, Lord God. Lord, we choose to follow you even to the deep to follow you even to the deepest parts of the ocean. And we cast our nets, Lord, not knowing if fish will come, but knowing that if we trust in you, all things will work together for the good for those who love you. Father, we love you this day. Father, I thank you for all that you continue to do. Thank you for your love, your peace, and your joy. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, Amen and amen. Wasn't that a powerful message? Isn't God good? You know, one thing I know for sure, the word of God never returns void. It's always going to do what it's supposed to do. So here's your challenge. Apply the word of God that you heard today. If this message has been a blessing to you in any way, I'm encouraging you to consider sowing a seed. You know, here at Word Life, we're seeing lives transform. We're seeing people saved, healed, delivered. And that happens through partnerships. So we welcome your partnership. If you feel led to come and be a part of what God is doing here. If you have any prayer requests, let us know. We would love the opportunity. I'm gonna pray for everybody here in a second. But if you have anything specific, let us know. We would love the opportunity to partner with you in prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for each and every viewer. Father, I add my faith to their faith right now. In the name of Jesus, I speak blessings over their lives, over their children, over their households. I boldly declare that they are above only and not beneath. They are the head and not the tail. And they walk in victory in Jesus' name. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you next time.